So Jason, there's been a lot of talk about future of work, even before COVID, AI is taking over, things will change. But with COVID also things got escalated and now working from home is an option and it's working for everyone, but still some managers are hesitant. So in your opinion, where, what's going to happen in the future? What's the future of work is going to look like? And how can job seekers be prepared for that? What skills they need? Uh, that's a, it's a really good question and a really big question. Yeah. Um, and I, I want to be very clear. I don't, I spend a lot of time thinking about and about the future of work. I spend a, a lot of time trying to understand what's happening so that perhaps we can better prepare. I, I have no crystal ball, so I can't, yeah. I can't with any definitive, anybody that makes definitive predictions about the future, you should be very, very cautious of because the future is unknown. We do yeah. not know what's going to happen. Know. Right, COVID proved that to us. We did yes. not, nobody saw that coming or at least not very many people. So, yeah. um, but what I would say is I think there's some things that we for sure, I think can count on, right? I think one is work in the future is going to be more distributed and more fluid than it has been in the past for people. So where we work, when we work, how we work is going to be a lot more fluid than it was in the past. You're gonna have to plan as an organization, you're going to have to plan to support employees that are working in a lot of different places. They might be working from home sometimes, working you know, in a coffee shop, working in a WeWork, working in an office. They might be working in lots of places. We don't, but but you've got to have work systems that supports people across a variety of places. So that's that's I think number one. I think the other sort of macro trend that I think is really important yeah. is that as opposed to what you brought up, which I think is really interesting, prior to COVID, the conversation about future of work was so much about the robots are coming for all of our jobs and you know the end of the world is, is near, right? That, that's the robots are gonna take over. And interestingly, I think what happened is what we've seen, and I think through COVID and through a variety of things is we're realizing that you know, it's AI isn't, I don't think necessarily going to, to have the kind of impact that a lot of people thought. It's certainly yeah. going to replace a lot of jobs that probably people don't want to do in the first place. The kind of work that maybe they that isn't as rewarding, that doesn't require the ingenuity and the, the creativity and the innovation and all the things that humans are uniquely capable of doing. Yeah. And I think so. So I think what we saw is that we really saw we put a fine point on, I think, the human side of what it takes to fuel great work. And so things like, you know, we saw like how important well-being is, right? If well-being is diminished, like when we're working from home or during a pandemic, when people were under stress, anxiety, depression, whatever, we're not you can't do your best work. It doesn't matter where you are, you can't collaborate well or be real creative if you're having those issues. And so I think at the same token that we're realizing we've got to use technology and tools to automate work, AI is going to help us probably automate some things that we don't necessarily want to do as people. The other side also came into focus, which is the human side of management, the human side of work really got a light shown on it. And so organizationally, I think that's where we can, it's sort of this weird balance that we're going to be um, trying to make as, as organizations and managers going forward is how do we, how do we use technology to enable work by, by also, but also really caring for the human. Now, I think from a, from a job seeker perspective, you know, if you're looking to the future and thinking about, um, thinking about, where do you invest? How do you invest? How do you skill up? I think the key is to really look for, um, to think about the kinds of things you do or the kind of things you can do that do require, you know, require creativity, require cooperation, require collaboration, um, and really lean into learning those kinds of skills, because those will be the kinds of things that are always going to be important. Yeah. They're always valued um in organizations and and those are skills that will differentiate you if you really learn to to do those well yeah, a lot of transferable skills soft skills that people were talking because 
during COVID, a lot of people were laid off and they didn't know how to transfer if, because they were in a certain job for 10, 20 years. How can I transfer those transferable skills, relationship, networking? Those are the things that will be beneficial, right? I would, I would agree. I mean, my, my first book, Social Gravity, was all about um, social capital and networking and the power of relationships. And, that mm. I, and I still, to this day, fundamentally believe that if you want to make yourself kind of resilient to disruptions throughout your career, the most important thing you can do is make a goal and really invest in building a big, us rich network of relationships in your industry and beyond because when when you're out there investing in people building relationships you know doing doing what you can to support people staying in touch when the moment comes that you need help when you get laid off your whole network will come rallying to your aid if they know you and they trust you and you build those relationships. So I completely agree with you that networking and building those relationships may be the single most powerful thing you can do. Those are great tips, Jason. I really appreciate that. And I apologize for the people listening. There might be some technical problem. The voice is there's a lot of each happening. So I apologize for that. But tune in tomorrow for another great question with Jason. Thank you.